In the previous video, we looked at um, the infinite polynomial uh, y equals 1 plus 1 half x plus 1 fourth x squared plus 1 eighth x cubed plus 1 sixteenth x to the fourth and so on. And what we found is that um, if we use the values 1 or 0 or negative 1 for x, we could actually find a y value uh, by putting those values of x in and then looking at, at what this series of numbers converge to. And we found that when we put in 2, um, we actually ended up getting 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. So that diverges to infinity. When you put in negative 2, we got 1 plus negative 1 plus 1 plus negative 1. And so the sums there were 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So um, for that choice of x, negative 2, the series doesn't add up to give us a value of y. So what, what we found, or what you took my word for, is that as long as x is between 2 or negative 2, 2 and negative 2, but not including either of those, that this series gives us um, a legitimate function. Now, um, in general, what we have here is this, this is something that we call a power series, this infinite polynomial. I already threw out the word series a time or two. Um, so this is a power series. It's an infinite polynomial. And the general power series looks like y equals a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared and so on. And so in these cases, the, these um, a's are the coefficients. They're just numbers. And they're subscripted with the subscript for each coefficient matching the power of x that it goes with. So this is the general form of a power series, a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, and so on. So if we were looking at our specific power series, um, things match up. a0 for our power series would be 1, a1 would be 1 half, a2 would be 1 fourth, and so on. Now, um, in this case, uh, so what we have is we've got a function then that we've defined as an infinite polynomial, this one up here with 1 plus 1 half x plus 1 fourth x squared and so on. Uh, that's not a function that you would recognize, but there are some functions that you're actually familiar with um, that have power series representations. So let's take a look at a few of those. Um, the first one I want to look at is let's look at the power series uh, 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared, plus 1 sixth x to the third, plus 1 24th x to the fourth, and so on. Now, it may not be clear where these denominators are coming from. I'll explain that in a moment. But it turns out that this series is actually a valid function for any value of x. And if you put in some value of x and add up what you get, um, what you'll find is that the result is actually e to that uh, value of x power. Okay, so this is the power series for e to the x. Now these fractions you might wonder about, well, the 24 turns out to be equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which we write as a 4 with an exclamation point after it, or this is what we call 4 factorial. And as you might guess, 6 is actually uh, 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. All right? And if you think about it, the 1 half would be a 1 over 2 factorial. There's actually a coefficient of 1 in front of the x, which would be 1 over 1 factorial. And this guy here, the 1, we could actually think of as 1 over 0 factorial times x to the 0. Now that would seem incorrect because you would think that 0 factorial would be 0. But in fact, by definition, 0 factorial equals 1. Okay, now that may seem illogical, but it turns out that 
Uh, factorials are very, very common in mathematics. And everything we want to do with factorials works just fine as long as we take 0 factorial to be 1. Now you might wonder here um, how, why this converges for all values of x. And what's going on, as you can see, if we pick some x like 1,000, we're taking powers of x. By the time you get to 4, we would have, the, um, we would have 1,000 to the 4th which would actually be a trillion, which is a huge number. So a trillion over 24 would be pretty big. And you might think that we're going to have a problem with adding up large numbers here. But it turns out that at some point, um, these factorials start getting much, much bigger, even to a 1,000 to a power. So by the time we get out to a term that might look like 1 over 10,000 factorial, and then a thousand to the ten thousandths, uh, the factorial is so much bigger that it actually divides that larger value to give us some reasonable number. So um, factorials grow very, very rapidly in size, um, faster than powers of any number. So that's why this guy converges for any value of x. Now, um, what we want to do here is sometimes we want to use a more compact notation for these things. So let me rewrite the e to the x and use the factorials. So using the factorials, e to the x looks like 1 over 0 factorial, x to the 0 plus 1 over 1 factorial times x to the first plus 1 over 2 factorial, x to the second, and so on. So let's go plus dot, dot, dot. And then let's put in a general term out here. So the general term looks like 1 over n factorial x to the n. The factorial matches with our exponent of x. So we show this using a, this compact notation called summation notation. And what we do for summation notation is we write what the general term looks like. So 1 over n factorial x to the n. And we indicate that we're adding up a bunch of things that look like that by putting this symbol. Um, I, that's a little sloppy. It really looks more like this officially. Um, but when I write it, you'll see it looking a little less aesthetically pleasing. But let me see if I can fix that one a little bit. And then we indicate below the summation symbol what n starts at, which is 0 in this case and it goes on to infinity. So this is uh, what we call the summation form of the series for e to the x. When we write out a bunch of terms like I've been doing so far, um, something like this that I'm circling in green, this would be what I would call the expanded form. And it's convenient sometimes uh, to work in uh, summation form, but sometimes it's a little more illuminating to work in expanded form. So we'll use whichever form seems more advantageous for what we're doing at the time. Now, uh, so we have this power series representation of e to the x. In fact, that is the standard representation of it. Um, when you use the e to the x button on your calculator, it's got to get a value somehow. And I don't know exactly how calculators do that. That's usually proprietary information. But it's very likely related to this power series. So let me write in the series again. It's 1 plus x, 1 half x squared, plus 1 over 3 factorial, x to the third, plus dot, dot, dot. Now, if we were to take that series and take out um, only the even terms in there, so let's take the 1 and then the 1 half x squared, and then our next term would be 1 over 4 factorial times x to the 4th, and our general term would look like 1 over, we need an, an even number, and we get evens by taking 2 times an integer, so 1 over 2n quantity factorial, times x to the n. Okay, so we want to take out those terms. 
And what we'll do is we'll alternately add and subtract them. So we add the one, subtract the, the squared term, add the fourth power term, subtract the um, sixth power term, which would be the next one here. And then let me put, uh, darn, I didn't leave myself much room there. So this would be a minus sign coming next. Then there would be a dot, 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 and then a plus. And then um, I, I messed up on my exponent. The exponent, of course, should match what we're doing the factorial of in the denominator. So this would be x to the 2n. But then I somehow need to indicate um, whether we have a plus or a minus here. And the way we do that is we actually make the numerator of our fraction be a negative 1. And then we put in uh, an exponent that will give us the proper sign. So here, notice this is where n equals 0. We want um, a positive 1. When n equals 1, remember, when we use 1 for n, we actually take 2 times 1, which would be our 2 factorial, or 2. Um, then when n equals 2, we have a negative 1, or 1. Sorry, when n equals 2 here, um, we would have positive 1, and so on. So if we take negative 1 to the nth power, that will actually give us the correct sign that we want and make the signs um, alternate. And it turns out that this series uh, represents the cosine function. So this is cosine of x. And this function also converges for all x. So actually, let me write that uh, x between negative infinity and infinity. Right, so between all values from negative infinity to infinity, um, for x, give, this gives us cosine of x. And uh, we can also use a summation notation. So cosine x equals the sum. Yikes, I tried to do a little better there. Didn't do so great. So let me go back to my fairly sloppy version. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity I can't live with that. I'm not a huge neat nick, but um, that's just a little over the top. Okay, so sum from n equals 0 to infinity of our numerator is negative 1 uh, to the n to give us our alternating signs. Uh, the denominator is 2n factorial, which gives us factorials of even numbers. And then we want the corresponding even powers of x. Now, if we were instead to take out the odd powers of x from the e to the x, um, what would you perhaps guess we would get? Well, related closely to cosine, of course, is sine. And in fact, when we take out those odd powers from e to the x and make alternating signs like we did with the cosine, we actually get the series for sine. So series for sine x looks like x minus 1 over 3 factorial, um, x to the third, plus 1 over 5 factorial, x to the fifth, minus, and then dot, dot, dot. And so what does our general term look like? Well, again, to get the alternating signs, we're going to want negative 1 to some power. And we'd actually like to start out here with n equals 0. So when n equals 0, we want a positive, and negative 1 to the 0 is positive, of course. So it looks like this will just be 1 here. Now, to get our even numbers, though, um, or our odd numbers, the way we get odd numbers is by using either 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. And you can see that when n equals 0, we want a power of 1 on our x, uh, which we would get by choosing uh, 2n plus 1. Okay, so we want to keep the 2n plus 1 for our power. And, of course, the factorial we're doing in the denominator has to match that. So that's 2n plus 1 uh, factorial. So this is our series for the sine function. And like cosine, it converges for x between negative infinity and infinity. And we can also write a summation form of that, so sine x looks like the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 um, factorial 
and then x to the 2n plus 1 power. Okay, so there we have some uh, power series for relatively common functions that we're used to. And in the next video, we'll look at how we can do some manipulations with these power series.